So as of right now, I there will be no coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix on my Twitch channel for the next three days. Uh, after that, if I'm still in the event, probably will be covering it. But I, I do just want to stress once again for all the people out there, it is it is temporary. This is not uh, permanent in, in any way, shape, or form. And while it's, while it's unfortunate, uh, it has happened. And again, I'm looking forward to returning to Twitch as soon as possible. And welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the first round game that I played in the FIDE Grand Prix with the black pieces against Levon Aronia. Now, as you guys know, I played Levon in the final of the previous FIDE Grand Prix here in Berlin, and I knew that I was probably going to have to play against him in this, in this third and final event as well. So without further ado, let's jump right into the game. So the game goes D4. Now I play D5, C4, I take the pawn. Now again, a lot of people in retrospect are probably going to be asking why did I choose to play the Queen's Gambit Accepted. Now it is an opening that I prepared for the first event here in Berlin, and I decided to stick with it. So Levon plays E4, B5, A4, C6, A takes B5, C takes B5, Knight to C3, and now I play Queen B6. Now most of you will remember that Levon had a game in the semifinals of the first event against none other than my fellow American colleague Lenny A. Dominguez. Now in that game, Lenny Levon, sorry, in that game, Levon played knight to d5, queen to b7, bishop f4. So again, this was not a huge surprise to me, although I have to say that after that game, I wasn't sure if Levon would repeat this line with the white pieces. So now I play e5. Bishop takes e5, and now I go knight to d7, Levon goes back, and I play knight to f6. Now it's worth noting that on first glance you might think, well wait a second, white can go check, king to d8, and take the rook here on a8, and white's just up a rook. However, if white plays like this, there's a very nice move, bishop to b4 check, attacking the king, and after king to e2, queen takes e4 would in fact be checkmate here, the king simply has no squares. So instead of knight c7, bishop f4 is played, now I go knight f6, Knight to c7, king to d8. Again, all standard theory. I'm not going to go into the intricacies of, you know, why I played this move or that move at this point in the game. Just, just know that this has been played before, and it's all standard. So now we have knight takes a8. And now I go queen takes e4 check, attacking the king. Levon plays knight to e2. And now I play queen takes a8. Now on first glance, you'll notice that white has an extra rook for a knight on f6. However, white is kind of lacking in development here. And additionally, I have very quick play like knight to d5, bishop b4, and also moves like rook to e8 as well. So it's very, very sharp and very complicated. So here Levon plays queen d2. Now in his previous game against Lenny A. Dominguez, which I've alluded to before, he played this move f3. Now again, I probably will play this opening again in the future, so I'm not going to give away any secrets about that game or the lines that I've looked at here, but it is another variation that white can play. So queen d2 is played here. Now I play knight d5, knight to c3, and I go bishop b4. Now the idea is that again, if white can get castled and finish development, white will have an extra rook and be much better, especially because my king on d8 is also very poorly placed. So now bishop e2 is played, I go rook d8, and now Levon plays this move bishop g3. Now it's worth noting that obviously top level players have a lot of time to do preparation. Now when you, when you let the computer think for quite a bit here, it realizes this move is playable, but on first glance, it's not so clear why bishop g3 is okay. Now, I will say that in this position, I had looked at the top move according to the computer, which is move, this move king to f1, um, but I had not looked at bishop g3, so it was definitely a move that took me by surprise. So now I go knight to f6, Levon castles, and now I play knight to e4, queen c2. Again, all these moves are relatively forced, so that's why I'm not going into deep explanations. So now in this position, I thought for a long time, and I played this move bishop to f5. Now it's worth noting that according to the computer, you can very simply just take this pawn, take this knight on c3, and take back with the bishop, and after a move like rook a b1, you can play this move queen to d5. Now one thing that I stress a lot in my streams and in my videos is playing like a human and why even if you even if you look at the valuation bar you do analysis sometimes it's very difficult because the moves that you'll see with the computer are not so obvious to humans if you're unaware of exactly what is going on now very specifically in this position after bishop f3 b4 black is actually completely fine here but again without knowing the objective evaluation without being sure about what's going on it's very very hard to play because your king is open you feel like there might be an idea like rookie one there might even be an idea like queen a4 and you start to worry about all these different problems in the center of the board now again in retrospect it's very easy to see with the computer that after a move like queen a4 you can play the very cold-blooded move a5 and black is just better but again when you're when you're playing over the board and you're not sure exactly what's going on some of these moves are not intuitive 
So instead I play this move Bishop F5, very logical developing move, try to put more pressure on the center of the board, maybe line up some discovered attacks towards the Queen on C2 as well. So now Bishop H4 is played and this is where essentially I lost the game. Now the way that my thinking went during the game was I thought for the first minute or two I was thinking well okay what if I play F6 Bishop F3. I thought very simply I could go Bishop takes C3, B takes C3 and play this and play this move Knight G3. Now as I said I thought for only about a minute or a little over a minute when I was doing this calculation and what I overlooked here is that after Queen, Queen to B2, Knight takes F1, I saw Queen takes B5, Bishop E4, and I simply overlooked this move, Rook takes A7 here, after which I believe that White is better. Again, I don't know if all these moves are absolutely correct, but I was very afraid of Queen to B2, and even Queen A2 is apparently very good as well. So that was the thought process I had when I when I initially approached this position was I thought there were two moves, there's F6 or G5. So I started by thinking about F6, and then I decided to spend about 30 minutes looking at this move G5. Now, as it turns out, G5 is probably the best move here, I think, um, because after Bishop G5, Lev and I discussed this after the game, and he mentioned this very long line with F6. I believe the move here was Knight takes B5, and it was F takes G5, Rook takes A7, Queen C6, Queen C4, takes, takes, knight d2, bishop d5, knight f1, rook e8, bishop c8, bishop to b7, rook to e1, rook takes c8, king d7, and I believe that he said rook c7, king d8, and f4, and white is still pressing here, probably the correct play, black can draw the game, but the show goes on. Now again, this is why playing professional chess is very difficult at the top levels, because players will prepare variations, which are 30 plus moves deep. This is in fact move 31 here. So my thought process was I looked a long time at G5 and I wasn't sure what to do, so then I defaulted to F6. Now again, it's not like this is some huge problem, but the reason it's a problem is that as soon as I took on C3 and got to this position, I realized that now my whole idea with Knight G3 was no good. And in fact, I spent half an hour looking at G5 and realized after playing these moves that my whole idea with Knight G3 was no good. So now I was in a very bad spot because I realized I'd miscalculated, which then also affects your confidence a little bit too, because at this point you're now now you're very hesitant and you're not sure what's going on. And unfortunately here, I wasn't really able to keep it together. So I played g5, Levon plays rook e1. Now again, I know the computer says the move like queen b2 is good, but at this point, Levon was also out of his preparation and it's not a very natural move. So he goes rook e1, and this is where I, I, I definitely make a severe blunder and, and lose the game. Now, if I play this move knight d takes c3, the computer says that after bishop g3, b4, black is still kind of hanging on, but again, it looks very wrong. First of all, there's a pin on from f3 to a8. White is an open a file for the rook. Additionally, my king is very poorly placed, and it just feels like everything is super, super loose here for black, and it feels like something is going to collapse. Now, again, as I've said before, computers will say, no big deal, black's completely fine. But for a human, when you look at the position, it feels like something is wrong intuitively. So I should have taken. But again, sort of fitting with the theme of what happened where I miscalculated this knight g3 line before, I now made a huge blunder just on the spot. I played this move knight f4. And Levon played queen a2, which I thought was the best, which, which I thought it was the move that I calculated. The only problem is the line that I intended to play here simply doesn't work. So what I intended to play was pawn takes bishop, queen to a5 check, king c8. And basically what I forgot is I thought that after queen b5, I had this very devilish trick with knight h3 check. Because if king f1, I can take with the other knight, which is checkmate. King goes to f1, knight d2 is also checkmate. But after pawn takes rook g8, bishop g4 takes, I simply forgot that there's this move queen takes c4, creating the classic right 90 degree right triangle here. Now again, the only line that I saw here was I saw queen a6, but I thought that after king... Was it king d, king d8 or king d7? I don't remember which move. I think it was like king d8 check. I thought that after like king c8, maybe I could survive here. Now again, computer actually, I guess, says that after pawn takes rook g4, king f1, white is escaping the checkmate, but it feels very, very dangerous. I'm really not sure that Levon would have found this. However, there's a much simpler path to victory, which is queen takes c4, as I said, creating the right triangle. And now I have to go to d7, because if I go to d8, he takes the rook. And after king d7, the very simple queen f7 leads to a checkmate. If king d6, there's rook a6. And after king c6, there's a beautiful checkmate, rook a6, king b5. Rook to b1, king a6, and now the very nice queen a2, creating the classic ladder checkmate. So when I played this knight f4 move, which I played almost instantly, by the way, this is what I miscalculated. I simply thought that I had this knight h3 trick, and then to my horror, I realized, of course, almost instantly after queen a2 is played, that this whole knight, a3 idea, knight h3 idea simply doesn't work. So I thought for a long time here, and you know, at this point I was already down maybe half an hour on the clock. 
I really kind of wanted to resign, but I told myself, you know what? I'll just play a move, see how it goes. So I play queen b7 here, and now Levon plays a shocking move. He plays his queen takes a7 move. Now, if Levon had played queen a5, which I had looked at, I probably would have just resigned the game right here on the spot. Instead, he takes on a7, which it's still losing, but there, is, there are some chances for counterplay, primarily because of the pawn structure and my ability to potentially create a pass pawn on the queen side. So we trade, I go rookie six, and now bishop takes e4 is played not bishop g3 by the way because now after knight takes c3 i have two connected pawns going up the board and even though white's probably still better it starts getting very tricky so levon takes i take back he goes f3 not rook takes e4 because again same sort of trick bishop e4 f3 and now the very nice move knight to e2 in between and now after king f king f2 bishop d3 again bishop g3 knight takes c3 Two connected pawns going up the board, pass pawns, very, very tricky for white to play, and black probably has enough to draw here. So Levon plays f3, now I go rookie two, plays bishop f2, and now I play this move b4, takes, I go c3, and now during the game, I actually thought that white probably had some way to keep peace on the board with a move like rook a1, but Levon found was objectively the best, best way forward, which is a trade on e2, king h1, not king f1, by the way, because then after c2, bishop b3 queen if he takes and goes b5 i always have a bishop d3 trick to collect the pawn on b5 so instead levon plays king to h1 here now i go c2 bishop e3 i promote to a rook of course just having some fun he takes i take back b5 and now there's sort of the wide people problem why does he split pawns going up the board additionally i have this very weak pawn on f6 as well so my pieces are very very uncoordinated here so I go king to c8. Now the reason I did this is because white is threatening b6. So for example, say I go knight e2, b6. I cannot take the pawn on d4 because white will make a check and then push the pawn to b7 and b8 and win the game. Or actually, it's worth noting, by the way, sorry, after b7, knight c6, white does not promote to queen. White plays rook c8. So after, after b8, queen takes and maybe h5, there are some chances for black to maybe draw this end game. Objectively, it should be winning for white, but there are chances. But white has this move rook c8, and now again, if I take the rook, white makes a queen. If I go over, he takes and makes a queen this way, so it's completely winning. So I do have to be very careful, and I figure that the best practical chance here is to bring the king to b8, stop this pawn, and the idea is that if white tries to use this pawn, pushing it forward, I can bring the knight back to e5, and maybe even d7. If I get a position like this, there, there are good chances that I can draw the game. So this is the path for getting the knight back to stop this pawn. So I figure if I can stop the b6 pawn by putting the king on b8, then maybe I can bring the knight back and stop the d pawn as well. So d5 is played, I go knight d3, and now Levon finds the best move, which is g4. Very important move because again, after d6, knight e5 here, it's very tricky and I'm not sure white in fact is winning anymore because after rookie seven, I play h5 to stop g4. And now I'm gonna go knight d7 next move or maybe even h4. And I think that this is close to, close to a draw. Computer says white is still quite a bit better, but it becomes very hard to play. So g4 is a fantastic move by Levon because now I cannot put the bishop on g6 because now the pawn is too fast. I go knight e5, d7, knight f7, for example. White goes rook c7, followed by rook c8 and d8 queen. So I have to go to c8 with the idea that if white plays d6, knight e5 here, after takes knight e7, again, I'm still worse, but I'm guarding the pawns and I have maybe some outside chances to draw this. Objectively, I think this is still losing. But there is some hope here, at least. So Levon, to his credit, does not do this. He plays rook f7, understanding one key principle here, which is that he does not want this h7 pawn, because I can always guard the f6, f6 and g5 pawns with a knight on d7. But he realizes that by going rook f7 and taking this one, it's going to be very hard for me to guard these pawns on g5 and h7. So here I go bishop a6. Only try, by the way, because I have to try and activate this bishop somehow. Again, if I play knight e5, rook f6, white's just going to go and gobble the pawns on the king side, and I'll have to resign. So I try bishop a6 here, rook f6, and now I go king b7. Levon plays king g1. I go bishop b5. Again, don't really have many moves here. If I go bishop c4, there's a very nice win here for white with d6, king b6, d7, king c7 here. And now after king to c7, white has a crushing move, rook to c6, which will win the game. He wins the bishop, or he'll get a queen on d8. So instead, I play bishop b5. Rook to f5 is played here, and now I play knight f4. Now, I could have tried to play h6 here, but again, I felt that after rook f6, white's probably going to take the pawn, and if I'm not winning these two pawns immediately, for example, say we get something like this even, I figured, the, I figured that the pawn is way too fast on g5, so I thought there's no chance here. At least if I try to go knight f4 here, white cannot take on g5 because I have the fork. 
and maybe I can eat up these two pawns, and I still have an idea to maybe guard the pawn on h7 by putting the bishop on the b1 to h7 diagonal. So now Levon plays h4, I go bishop to d3, rook to f6, not rook g5 again because I have knight h3 with the fork. And now I go bishop d1. Again, at this point, it's still very, very bad. If I take on d5, white can play rook to d6. And I go bishop c4, and white takes. And again, very similar to the game, I'm going to end up losing the pawn on h7 here. So instead, I play bishop to b1. Levon plays h takes g5. I go knight d5, rook f8. And now I have to take the knight, unfortunately. I'd love to take with the king and keep the knight close to the center. But then white would have rook b8 winning the game on the spot. So I have to take with the knight, f4. Now I go king c6, king up two. Generally speaking, this position probably is just clearly winning for white, primarily because white can run the king up the h file, but also these pawns are still very, very fast on both f4 and g5. So I go knight d7, rook f7, knight c5, hoping for f5, because then I have a fork with knight e4, and maybe I can salvage it, although even this is probably losing with correct play. So Levon goes king g3, I go bishop g6, and here Levon plays rook f8. Now, this move doesn't throw away the win, but after this move, it gets a little bit tricky because I have the tricky idea with knight e6 here. Now, the point is that after knight e6, if white goes rook f6, I can go king d7. And now if you play f5, I have the very nice move knight takes g5. If white takes, I go knight e4, creating the fork. And after king h4, knight takes f6, this position still will be a draw. So after knight e6, Levon played rook g8, and now I want king d6. And it was in this position that Levon actually got very upset with himself. And he blitzed out this move rook a8, and he slammed his pen down really hard on the table. Now the reason for that is that I suspect already at this point, Levon thought that he was completely winning, and he was very unhappy because now after rook a8, bishop b1, suddenly the pawns are glued. So if you go king h4, you lose the pawn on f4. If you go f5, I take g5. So white's kind of stuck here a little bit in terms of how to progress. That being said, unfortunately for me, the position is still probably completely lost. So Lev goes rook a1. I play bishop b4. Oh, and the second part, as far as why it's also practically speaking lost, is because at this point I already only had one minute for the entire game. So he goes rook d1. I play bishop d5. He goes rook d2. Another very, very good move here. Uh, sort of asks me what I'm doing. Now, again, computer says knight g7, rook h2. I can play maybe bishop e4, for example. But this would be losing because now white can play f5. Knight takes f5. And there's a very important move here, which is that white does not take. Because after takes, king f4, bishop g6, this is actually a theoretical draw. However, here white can go king to f4, and now I have to play knight g3 and bishop g6. But in this one with the extra pawns on the board, this is completely winning for white. So instead I play knight c7, trying to bring my king back, king h4. I go knight e6, f5, play knight c5. Again, don't really have many options. Knight d8 is a try, but again, after king h5, h6, it's completely winning. So I go knight c5, king h5, king e5, king h6, play knight e4, rook b2, and now I go bishop c4. Idea is that if white takes, maybe I can take and hope for some kind of blockade on the dark squares. Although even this probably is still, I think, winning for white after something like g5. However, instead, Levon very accurately chooses to play rook b4, bishop d3, and now he takes on e4. Now, I was hoping that he, he actually wouldn't see this, because after bishop takes, each, h, bishop takes e4, king takes h7, there is this trick king f4, and if white goes g6 here, I can actually take, and if g7, I take with check, I go bishop e6 and make the draw, and if white goes f6, I have king g5, f7 takes with check, king g7 take on f7. But of course, Levon here does not miss the win, he finds the correct move, king h6, and here I resign the game in view of the fact that I cannot stop all the pawns. After king g4, white goes f6, threatening f7, f8, and after bishop d5, there's g6, king f5, f7, the pawn on g6 supports the pawn on f7, and white pushes the pawn on f8, pawn to f8, makes a queen, and wins the game. So a very difficult game for me. Um, obviously, I felt in the in that early middle game, my calculation, my intuition, they just weren't really meshing together. Um, that being said, obviously, a lot of credit to Levon. He did play a great opening phase. Now, he did get fairly careless um, in the middle game. His technique was not quite there. But again, the position was so good for White that there were, there were several ways to victory. So unfortunately, I do lose in this first round game. Um, of the FIDE Grand Prix here in Berlin, but I will be coming back tomorrow and I will be playing as Andre Asapenko. Now, one other thing that I do want to add for those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, 
is that today I was banned from Twitch because I showed some chess games that were being played between Dr. Disrespect and Dr. Lupo on YouTube the other day. Now, incorrectly at the time, I assumed that because Doc had resolved his issues with Twitch, that there would be there would be no problems with showing that on my stream. As it turns out, Doc is still banned, and apparently it was only referring to legal issues. So as of right now, I, there will be no coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix on my Twitch channel for the next three days. Uh, after that, if I'm still in the event, probably will be covering it. But I, I do just want to stress once again for all the people out there, it is, it is temporary. This is not uh, permanent in, in any way, shape, or form. And while it's, while it's unfortunate, uh, it has happened. And again, I'm looking forward to returning to Twitch as soon as possible. So once again, peace and love to all of you who are watching this on YouTube. We will have a video um, of those games between the two doctors pretty soon on our channel here. But the situation is what it is. So once again, thank you all for your support. And I'll be coming to you guys, I guess, every day on, every day on YouTube with some recaps. So have a good one, everyone. Keep it real. Peace and love.